In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to insert a new column into a Cassandra column family. Our column family will be uh, a user uh, with two properties, username and password. And we will attempt to add a third column uh, named description. First thing we'll do is define a transport in a binary protocol that we can assign to the Cassandra client API so that we can open a connection to Cassandra and eventually invoke the insert operation. As you can see here, we have a transport and it points to an instance of Cassandra running on localhost and the default port 9160. Uh, we've also defined a binary protocol and attached it to the transport and we've taken the transport and the protocol and attached it to the Cassandra client API. So with that boring stuff out of the way we can now define a key space and a key space is nothing more than the namespace that our column family resides in. For our example we will use Mindplex as a key space. And that's that. Now we, need, well, now we need to define a column parent. You might be thinking, what is a column parent? A column parent is nothing more than a, a way to group multiple columns that belong to one column family. So we need to associate this column parent with an actual column family. And in our example, we are using user as a column family. So there you have it. Okay, so now we need the row ID of the row we wish to add the new column to. So we're going to pretend we know the row, um, the row ID of 100. In Cassandra, row IDs are, are saved as uh, byte buffers. So we need to take our string 100 and transform that into a byte buffer. Fun stuff. Presto, row ID. Okay, now we need a column. And this is the actual column we plan to add to the column family. So we need to add, we need to define its name, its value, and a timestamp. The name of the column is description. Oops, that should also be a byte buffer. Set the value. That's also a byte buffer. And lastly, we need to define the timestamp. And here we're going to use the current time in milliseconds. The reason why we need to define a timestamp here is because Cassandra uses the timestamp for conflict resolution. And conflict resolution is outside the scope of this tutorial, so we won't talk about it beyond that. So now we have all the elements required to actually do the insert. So let's take the client API and invoke the insert function, pass in our row ID, our column parent, our actual column and the consistency level. Here we're using consistency level 1 which basically means that this operation will not return until the data has been written to at least one Cassandra replica's um, commit log. So in other words 
the data will be consistent. And now we close the transport. Actually flush it out first, just to be good. Clean up resource citizens. And bam, that's it. And that concludes connecting a Cassandra, defining a new column, adding a column to an existing row, and then clean up our resources.